This is the Lion Feed reading list for October 2009. In this edition, we're going to be looking at about seven mags, I think, starting with Martha Stewart's Halloween edition, uh, which is really just a bit of fun, really. I, I, I know Martha Stewart devotees and probably Martha Stewart herself take this sort of stuff terribly seriously, but um, I don't think that's very healthy. Um, if you look at it as really fun and it's actually quite geeky and dorky. I mean, 13 ways to carve a pumpkin. It's almost like um, geek stuff for girls, women, middle-aged women or something. Uh, it's interesting too, she has all sorts of weird tie-ins. So you get all this really lovely photography and really, you know, precise and stuff that looks effortless, but you can tell there's been a lot of work done on it. And then you get these sort of ads in the middle for really crap products like sequin decorated skulls, which are endorsed by Martha Stewart and Co. It's really strange. Um, it, it, this, this issue too, I would say, is worth it for the cover, where Martha is dressed up as a ghostly equestrian rider with weird contacts. All that cake was awesome looking too, and I want to make that. I don't make cakes, but I want to make that. Um, never happen. Everything just looks so good in it. But it is, there is so much time and effort and, uh, you know, anal retentive focus to detail in a Martha Stewart magazine that you really have to find joy in it. <laughs> um, and I did. Uh, and then I bought Time, which is another uh, sort of bastion of American magazine-ness. I actually bought this because um, a friend bought a copy and I looked at it and thought, you know, actually, it's so well designed. It's just, it's quintessential sort of editorial design, really, at the moment. At time has probably not looked this good for, you know, decades and decades. Um, oh, it's still got the lovely information graphics too, which I remember when I was a kid flicking through, and they were my favourite bits. Um, if you want a reminiscence, my mum had a friend who used to collect Time magazines, and I would sit and go through piles of them just flicking to find all the information graphics you know in the shapes of um, you know gridiron players and stuff like that <laughs> they're not as wacky these days but they're so lovely and well drawn and um, there's just a lot of what I would call magazine craft in Time magazine it's um, just you know as some forget about reading it <laughs> I mean read it it's got good articles but it's a really good sort of case of quintessential editorial design done really, really well. Um, and leading on to, it's nice that, actually not leading on at all because they're completely chalk and cheese. But in case you haven't encountered It's Nice That, it's a blog run by a couple of guys in the UK and I think every six months they're putting out a magazine that's sort of a bit like a compendium of stuff they've featured and people they've featured. And it's a really lovely chance to um, expand on some of their posts and stuff and interview, you know, longer interviews. So it's, and you know, massive lush full colour images and it's an article about rulers, I think. I have to admit, I haven't had a good read <laughs> of it yet. It, you just, you can flick through and be quite, you know, well fed just looking at the pictures, really. Uh, in this edition, there's an interview with Michael Gillette, too, one of my favourite illustrators. Um, there's um, some lovely bits of typography going on this issue as well. Um, and it's just a bit of an evolution from the last one in terms of uh, bolting down the editorial look a bit more. So hoping it changes every issue. It should be really good. Uh, thoroughly recommended, that one. Uh, and you can buy it from the It's Nice That website and I'll put a link to that on the blog. Um, Life Lounge. Now, I really don't want to like Life Lounge, and in fact, um, I think I probably only like this issue because it's a little more restrained than usual. But I know a lot of people in Australia rate it quite highly, um, but mainly because it has a lot of really lovely custom typography. Uh, it's another case, though, of this Australian idea that you have to Photoshop everything to death to make it even, you know, to make it interesting to people when really you just need forms and ideas. You don't need, uh, you know, constant sort of airbrush effects and shines and rainbows and stuff like that. And I'm criticising this, but actually this issue is quite restrained in that 
that respect and it's better for it. Um, although you could lose a couple of the sort of graffiti um, articles and you know, the skate stuff is alright because the graphics are kind of interesting but you've seen all these sort of features before really. Um, this is just presented with sort of a bit more attention to typography really. This is a good issue. I don't know if I can recommend the magazine as a whole, but I would definitely check that one out. And I'm out of breath already. Um, maybe I should have a glass of water when I do this or something. Anywho, uh, this is Neville Brody's return to editorial design, which um, if you follow this sort of thing, you would have read about on various blogs and, and places like that. And it's, it's good. It, it hasn't blown me away. It's there's a couple, like, apparently all the typefaces have been custom drawn. I don't know if they've been custom made for uh, Arena Homes Plus or if he's just sort of pulled them out of a tray of Ace typefaces that he had. I feel like a, a couple of them sort of jar, which I, I think is, you know, probably deliberate, but um, I wasn't so enthused. This issue too has some weird sort of, <laughs> like, they've managed to find Barry Kamen and, um, uh, Nina Cherry and that was Felix the guy who did that who's that girl video with Madonna or whatever like all these sort of um, faces that you wouldn't recognize now but were you know summed up in era like Judy Blame who was big in ID magazine for a long time um, who is now quite scary in that picture he's wearing some fake dog poo in a, a necklace around his <laughs> I mean it's, it's interesting he's got a bit scary in his old age though I think it could be just the urgent teller's photography style too, and probably uh, doesn't help. But yeah, the, yeah, typefaces are nice, but it's just I, I did. It's a bit hard to read this issue um, in some places, and that's I know that sounds that's actually quite a sort of late eighties, early nineties thing to say about a magazine. There was a lot of complaining about designers going overboard and making things unreadable. Um, well, there's a return to that in this issue, <laughs> you know. It's just, there's some bits that you just, you know, the type just looks just too small or funny colour or buttered up against something and, yeah, there's a weird sort of tension going on. Which is interesting if you probably haven't seen it, you know, before. Um, you won't have that problem with Fantastic Man because it's very much of now in terms of uh, it's very much about readability and everything's very clean and clear and classic typefaces and quirky editorial bits and bobs like there's a whole sentence down the spine introducing the issue and there's all sorts of little editorial quirks throughout that the design sort of works with which is what you get when you have uh, a designer slash editorial person in charge. There's an article about cuts of meat which is kind of cool and typically quirky for this magazine. There's an article with no photos, just colors in those little side bits, the little bits about color, and it starts with a blue and a green page. And really nice. Again, you, you probably wouldn't get that sort of thing from a magazine that isn't, um, that, that the editor doesn't have such a design now as, as the editor of Fantastic Man. Uh, it also, there's, I think I've, I know he was still in there. The, the Gentlewoman is going to be their new magazine launch to accompany Fantastic Man. Um, and you can see a sample of what will be inside inside Fantastic Man. So that's confusing. Inside Fantastic Man is the Gentlewoman. There we go. And you can see some spreads from here. The main difference is uh, Fantastic Man is in Times and Gentlewoman is in Futura, which helps. And randomly, they always seem to have this sort of editorial picture fit thing for Yves Saint Laurent, um, which they've had even before they featured women's clothes in there. It's kind of nice actually to see what was a quintessentially male magazine having sort of a female persona sort of tucked away inside. It's almost a shame, you know, that they are going to take, you know, pull the two magazines apart and make separate magazines when. It's sort of nice to have them sitting together. They, they should do one issue and the, like one side's Gentleman and one side's Fantastic Man. You can just like turn it over to flip between the two. I think that would be really cool. 
Um, I wasn't going to talk about Interview Magazine much more because I'm really disappointed that um, uh, Fabian Barron's come back and got rid of all Eminem Paris's lovely typefaces and stuff. But this is the 40th anniversary issue and being such a you know landmark issue, it is quite good. Quite good in terms of uh, you can go back and look you know at paparazzi pics from the 70s, the 80s and 90s and um, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's always nice anniversary issues because they can sit back and relax and be a bit indulgent with the, the magazine's personal history. And Interview Magazine has great sort of personal history. Um, alongside that is the usual sort of fashion bollocks that they seem to want to try and incorporate these days and dressing up celebs so they look like models and... Oh, it's it feels it still feels a bit tired, you know. Um, it's a bit like what happened with Love Magazine when they decided to ditch models completely and just focus on celebrity. Um, yeah, it's a bit that interviews going the other way. They're ditching the celebrities and sticking more models in. I guess this is why it's worth buying, though. This is a whole heap of uh, images from past issues. See, there's a whole bunch of really nice covers. Um, and it's all really lovely, lay, lay, laid out really well, and it's just, this is like why you buy something art directed by Fabian Barron, because this is where he gets things really right, and, and it's just really lush. And you sort of think, wow, well, actually, yeah, you are good. <laughs> Not something I've thought of Fabian Barron lately, yeah. Yeah, and a bit of controversial, I love this sort of flat splatter of you know, orangey red paint across OJ Simpson's face. But then, you know, you're back into the fashion bollocks and into using Mike Tyson, you sort of think, Arr! you know, this magazine could be better. But for a 40th anniversary issue, pretty good. Nice cover, too. Oh, and that's it. That's a much shorter one this time. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you later. Bye!